This is Erica Mello, and welcome to podcast episode number 40. Susan and I have diverted from our traditional one-to-one chat about one of our tough-to-treat patients, and we've invited a few listeners to come on on, uh, on an individual basis to present to both of us their tough-to-treat cases, or one of their tough-to-treat cases. And in this episode, uh, we have rock star physical therapist Daria Oler, and she is from New Jersey, and she was one of the oh, the first person to contact us about getting on the podcast and presenting us with one of her uh, tough cases, and it, it really was quite interesting, and we, we really enjoyed it. So what Susan and I are going to be doing is we have one more episode similar. We have another PT coming on and discussing one of her tough to treat cases. Then we'll go back to our traditional format. And then once a quarter, we will bring on another listener who can present their tough to treat patient and will clinically reason through, uh, you know, their difficulties. And this patient was a, uh, an older gentleman of Daria's who was taking care of his wife, who obviously was also older and they, he had significant back and leg pain and it it was quite interesting. We went back and forth with regards to treatment. There's a lot of treatment, which was, is, is fantastic because Susan and I tend to go a lot and we talk about the clinical reasoning process, but this was what our hypothesis was based on what Daria told us and a lot of treatment, which is, which is, was great and, and, and quite interesting. and, And we all learned a lot. So we hope you enjoy it. And, uh, if anybody wants to come on and, and be a guest, email myself or Susan or can reply back to the next podcast email that we send out. Okay, thanks a million, guys. Enjoy. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is Erica Mello and Susan Clinton, and welcome back to Tough to Treat. This is episode number 40, and we have a special guest today. It's not just going to be Susan and myself talking the whole time. (laughs) We've decided to, uh, we sent out some feelers to have some listeners come on and give us their, you know, Tough to Treat complex patients, and we got, uh, you know, a bunch of people and uh, who really wanted just to hear our thoughts on, on a few patients of theirs. And our first guest today is a longtime listener. Her name is Daria Oler, and she is in New Jersey, correct? Daria, you're in New Jersey. Yes, Northern New Jersey. Northern New Jersey. So she is a, a, a patient uh, today. She'll describe at the beginning, and then Susan and I will just, you know, ask questions. And we'll, it's basically going to be like a conversation in in your living room, so to speak. So it'll be back and forth. And instead of Susie and I chatting, will it be the three of us? So we hope you enjoy it. And I will actually leave it to Daria just to give us a synopsis, a quick brief background on her patient. And Susan and I can, you know, ask questions, interject, and, and we'll take it from there. We hope you enjoy it. Okay, Daria, the floor is all yours, honey. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this patient is an 80-year-old male who I started seeing um, about three months ago. He came in complaining of left low back pain, left lateral hip pain, um, and sometimes pain that goes down his left lateral thigh. Um, He said it started when he was sitting in an uncomfortable chair at a car dealership for a while, got up, felt kind of stiff, was limping, and it never fully resolves. Before that, he didn't have any sort of history of something similar. Um, He went to the doctor. X-rays were fine. Um... He also has a history of uh, paresthesia in both feet, the left more than the right. Um, He has neuropathy, and it's been very slowly uh, worsening over time. But at that, when I initially saw him, it wasn't enough um, for any sort of medical intervention. Um, And then he also reported he was having difficulty sleeping, awaking every one to two hours. So he felt that on top of all the pain he's experiencing, he wasn't able to get a good night's sleep, which he thought was sort of affecting um, his pain even more. Um, and then he also had tried using pain patches and he would tell me over a couple months, he wasn't sure where to put them. Sometimes he's like, should I put on my back? Should I put on my hip? He seemed a little, um, not sure of where the root of the problem was for him. And then, um, I also had previously treated his wife and I know that she has a very complex medical history. So he is the caretaker for her. And I know they go to a lot of doctor's appointments. Um, he seems very stressed about how much he has to do with her and help her. And there always seems to be like a new major thing that's going on. Um, so his, so he saw his physician and the initial diagnosis was um, left lateral hip pain, um, trochanteric bursitis, and just a general low back pain. 
my initial evaluation, there was nothing major really standing out. Obviously, he was tender to palpate at his greater trochanter and everything like that. Um, he was limping, favoring the left side. Um, nothing, you know, super surprising at all. From the foot neuropathy, I'm looking at my notes, um, left dorsiflexion I had as a minus four out of five and plantar flexion was a minus four. Everything else was fine. Everything else, you know, within reasonable limits, reflexes were fine. And I specifically made a note that he seemed, he was visibly stressed and anxious. Mm -hmm. This was right after I took Susan's course um, in October. And I felt like everything we had just talked about was, oh, there we go. Um, so my initial goals with him were just to try to get him up and moving. He's very nervous about moving, very nervous about making the pain worse. Um, he, his posture is kind of guarded. His shoulders are forward and up. Um, when I would have him lie down just on his back on either side, he sort of would move very rigidly and I was trying different pillows, a bolster under his legs, a ball under his legs, different towels like we learned in the course. Um, and it was really difficult to get him in a comfortable position where he, you could just see, you know, I wouldn't get that relaxation with him. He just always was kind of up and guarded. Uh, I have a couple questions, Susan. Do you want to start or should I start? Or? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you said it was, you've been treating him for three months, Daria. How long, if, if I may have missed this, how long has he had it for? Um, it started the beginning of October and I started seeing him mid-October. Okay. And um, any, any movements in your initial evaluation that reproduced his symptoms? Not in particular. And that's been a little bit of a tricky thing when I ask him, is there anything specific, a position, a movement, an activity? And it's just sort of generally there. Um, walking is walking definitely will provoke his pain. Um, but outside of that, not really specific. Okay. And you said it started after a long bout of sitting? Yes. Yeah. He, he said it in an uncomfortable chair. Okay. And... Um... I had one other. Oh, any medications, any history of depression, any anti-anxiety, any medication? Um, not an actual diagnosis. Okay. So he has not taken any medications that would, uh, like, is, does he have any kind of cholesterol medication that he's taking, any anxiety, anti-anxiety meds or anything like that? I'm going to just double check. Um, yeah, that's okay. No. Okay. And did they have any children at all? Oh, oh so no, no, sorry, yes, yes, sorry. Adult children, no. yes. Adult children living out far from them? Um, one not too far, one probably a couple hours away. Okay, so he basically takes care of his wife and he has no sort of support or help from the, from the family. Not immediate. Okay. Not immediate, okay. Uh, that's just for me for now, Susan. If you have a couple things, I'm just... Yeah, I do. Um, you said that walking definitely provokes his pain. Mm -hmm. How far can he walk before he starts to hurt? It varies from day to day, but um, typically just walking in the clinic, which the parking lot is right outside the door, he's already open. Oh, sure. So 100 to 200 feet provokes yeah. his pain. Yeah. And does he feel better when he sits down? It depends on the type of chair. He said if it's a more cushioned, comfortable chair, yes. If it's something like a kitchen chair, dining room chair, usually not. Okay. So mm -hmm. when he sits and he can kind of slump into the chair, he feels better. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and does his paresthesias in his feet kick up when he was walking? No, overall, he said it, the intensity usually doesn't change. Does it, it doesn't get, progress, does, but in and out of walking, it doesn't change. Okay. So he still has the paresthesias when he sits down? Yes. Okay. Does he have paresthesias in his hands? No, just his feet. Okay. And also, so when you did movement stuff with him, was he able to flex or extend? minimally he's very um he's guarded and anxious that it might increase his symptoms okay so his lower so, forward flexes his hands would get like maybe like mid shin and extension is pretty limited he can initiate but he's not going very far so he's very okay. rigid yeah 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 okay yeah but he can flex yes and yeah. and did that increase his symptoms no okay so if he sits in a hard chair daria is he okay mm -hmm. No, he's not. He's worse. He's better in a slump, a slumped, a soft chair. Yes, yes, slump, soft chair. Got it. Okay. Uh, and he had the paresthesias before he started having the pain, right? Yes. Yeah. He's a, for a few years. For a few years. Okay. And did he have any other symptoms a few years ago besides this pain that started in October? Nope. All right. And 
Any any prior injuries? I'm sorry, Susan. I'm go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Any prior injuries? No, nothing. No specific. No, no, no significant medical history whatsoever. At 80, God bless them. 81. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Well, that's probably why he's scared as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, you know, I have a I have a couple of theories of what's going yeah. on with him. Um, you, uh, one of the okay. things that would be very interesting to find out is what he's so nervous about. If he's never hurt before, if he is a sole caretaker of his wife and he's afraid, um, being able to get him to start moving in any way that you can, of course, in ways that are not as painful so that he can start experiencing that can be very helpful. But it looks to me like, you know, it's kind of one of those things. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's probably going to be a duck. But, it, it, you know, this is a classic uh, presentation of spinal stenosis. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's a little bit different is the back pain, because oftentimes with spinal stenosis, you won't get the back pain. You'll just get the leg pain. But it could be a lateral spinal stenosis uh, more that has kind of crept in on top of the general one, because if he's not diabetic and there's no other reason for him to have paresthesias in his feet, then you have to look at neurogenic or vascular claudication. And it's not, you know, and the only way to do that, of course, right, is either a bike or, or walking. You know, if you, if you can sit on a bike slumped and pedal away and not have pain, um, you know, or problems, then, you know, they can kind of consider that, you know, a little different than um, upright and standing. But if it comes on with both, then you have to kind of consider, you know, vascular claudication. But it doesn't really sound like the picture of vascular claudication because it's not the, like, it, the paresthesias don't get worse or he doesn't get the pain down, you know, in the lower leg um, that you would expect to see with that. So, you know, part of me is just kind of like, okay, we've got a guy who's just a little bit on the, um, you know, the side of, of the season of his life where he's aged some and it makes me, you know, with the paresthesias on both sides, it kind of makes me start thinking along the lines of, okay, well, spinal stenosis there or not isn't really going to change how we're going to treat him, right? Yeah. We still have to, we still have to kind of figure out what movements and what things we can do to the start, that's going to start getting some changes. And um, I'm just curious, did you do any neural tension tests with him? Yes. Um, for going through the median nerve glides, I can get to like um, finger extension and he'll start to feel a little tension, but it's nothing really that jumps out at all. Right. What about his legs? About, yeah, his legs. Um, legs are actually okay too. And I'd say he has about maybe 60, 65 degrees on both sides for a straight leg raise. And it's what not about, did you do a slump test? Sorry, Daria. Um, slump is fine. Okay, well, that would make sense since he feels better mm -hmm. in a slump soft chair. Yeah, he feels better in flexion. So that's yep. going to be the, the interesting part is that you're probably going to have to get him, um, you're going to have to get him into a lot more flexion to fire that baby off. And you may have to bring his arms up into it in order to begin to get the, the um, you know, get the tensioning in there to really re see if it reproduces the symptoms. <laughs> But, you know, this is another one, too, that probably the other thing that, that strikes me, and Erica, I'll, I'll just say this and then let you jump in again. Um, it sounds to me like he doesn't tolerate compression very well. <laughs> so he doesn't tolerate it in standing, and he certainly doesn't tolerate it in sitting in an erect posture. He tolerates mm -hmm. it much better if he can flex forward. Mm -hmm. um, so that you know, and oftentimes with the, you know, with the, you know, kind of cranky stuff on the, you know, lateral or central uh, stenosis stuff is they do feel better when they can kind of, you know, flex and open those pieces up. Um, you know, if, if, did you put him on his tummy to see if he had any? He won't tolerate it. So I've he can't tried. get on his tummy at all? No, I've tried a couple different sessions over time to ask and he's, no. Okay. So, you know, that's, that, that's pretty telling too. So I'm wondering if you would be able to get him to, instead of getting on his tummy, be able to like bring the high low table up enough where he can like lean forward and, and get onto, you know, get, you know, kind of in a, in a, like his legs are straight, his hips are bent and his trunk is relaxed over a couple of pillows on the high low table to see if you can start helping him move up into extension with one leg versus the other leg to see what can happen and um, what he can tolerate there. I mean, in standing, Susan, you're talking about yeah, that? Yeah, like he, like he could stand and just bend over, you yeah, know, like, you yeah. know, but you'd have to use probably a high-low table to get yes. him high enough where he's not 
feeling like he's going to fall or anything. The other thing too, is that they can't get into, um, if they can't or won't get into the prone position, which I totally understand because it, it evidently bothers him to, to close those segments down or to get into that, you know, kind of a uh, bit of compression that extension would give to him would be trying to figure out how you can start to move him into some extension from other positions, um, such as getting his hands on the wall. And having him, you know, put his feet down and do a slight lean backwards um, with his hands. Yep, exactly. So everybody out there, I'm just, I'm just having him stand face the wall, put his hands straight forward on the wall, and just work on even something as simple as cervical extension mm -hmm. to see what you can get there. And he can flex his knees and straighten them and come back, and you can kind of work through some things that way. If he can't, if he feels like he's unstable, you can always bring his feet out a little bit too. Okay. and get him to move in in those ways as well but um I, I it would be interesting to see how he does flex over if he just tips forward at his thorax all the time to go down and really trying to see if you can get him to flex his knees first flex knees and hips first to start like to go you know to pick things up off the floor rather than tipping uh -huh. over to pick things up so that he can start, um, you know, accessing the motion of his of his uh, knees and hips to get him moving a little bit better that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, go, Erica? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, um, I would agree with all of that. I think that, you know, sometimes these people, you see 81 years old, leg pain, it's, you know, you're like, oh, gosh, spinal stenosis. A lot of it's very sort of, they're tough to treat um, because of, of, of just the years of, 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 of movement and, 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 you know, my, just a poor movement, especially when he's taking care of his wife. My question, I have a bunch of things, but when he was standing, Dario, was he pretty centered on his feet or was he shifted over to one side? He'll shift to the right to unweight the left a little bit. Usually. Okay. okay. So he's off his left leg. Okay. Um, then I like the high, low table. You could also do the, just have him like, as Susan mentioned, just re unweight the hands and then just raise and lower the table passively with the foot pedal if you have it to see if he can just tolerate it, just passive extension as well. Um, you know, just play with it if, if, you're, if you have that. Um, I would also, I do think, what does he have to do with his, for his wife? What does his caretaking consist of? The big things are having to take her um, to the doctor often. Um, so it's just the um, you know, getting in and out of their building, getting in and out of the car type of thing. With this type of weather, with the snow and potential ice, that um, he can't then always take her because it wouldn't be safe for them. So I know that adds a little bit of stress. And right. then, you know, all, doing all the things around the house too. Yeah. I mean, he sounds like he's, you know, besides the, you know, the obvious physical issues, he sounds like he has, he's really obviously very fear-based and fear of any kind of movement, um, you know, it really ramps up his nervous system. So, you know, all the things that, you know, Susan has mentioned, you know, with the, the you know, walking the hands up the wall. I like the, the, the plinth. Um, how about, question, how can he get on his hands and knees? Is that tough for him? I haven't tried yet because of how anxious he is. Okay. How uncomfortable he is just to be supine or sideline. Okay. So what I, what I would do then if, if this were my patient, because walking is the main issue and he's like a hundred feet tolerance, what I tend to do with a lot of these people is I will put small, small weight, um, like maybe five pounds in one of their hands like if it's the right or the left, depending on how he is, and have them walk and see if holding a weight in one of their hands decreases or increases their symptoms. Because one, you know, it could, if you put a weight in one hand, it could cause him to sort of open up that left side, make him feel better or worse. It just depends. You'd have to try. But that's what I would do um, and have him walk. And if he can walk 300 feet with a weight in his hand and without – symptoms then that's a progress and you could sort of progress that way um i also think that irrespective of the stenosis with a lot of the neuropathy i also put ankle weights on patients sometimes uh really small be because it makes it harder for them to move but at least at least it makes them aware of their feet uh peripheral neuropathy is tough to treat as well mm -hmm. so uh what i would also suggest is um i actually have a patient now i'm treating who's got significant neuropathy in her feet and i 
I have her sit. So sitting would be a comfortable thing for him and sit, put him in sitting in just a, you know, pain-free position and have his shoes off and have put towels underneath his feet and have him just move back and forth. Like he's just sort of rubbing his feet on the towels just to sort of wake things up down there. It's just a thought. Um, because you are really limited as to the the position you can treat him in. So, you know, there's sitting or standing. You know, sitting makes him feel better, but you need to sort of get him standing because he does need to, and at this point it's been three months, you know, it, you need to sort of get him moving a bit. Uh, you know, I would try the weight uh, just to see if that helps. And my other question is, ha what have you done so far and has anything helped or at all or this has been interesting it really depends on the day um and he's also very I feel like very aware of things and like um will sometimes possibly attribute an increase in symptom severity to what we did even though sometimes sometimes I could see yes and sometimes I'm like I don't know if it's related but um so I'll try I've had him on the table um oh and I have to put so just on a standard treatment table also put two thick yoga mats because he's very aware of like the little crease in the table so you can um raise it um so I've tried doing I've had him in hook lying where he's um bringing his knee side to side I tried doing he wouldn't be able to do um, heel sides with both legs at the same time. So I'll have him do one at a time, arms here, um, moving his knees side to side. Um, I try to gradually work into trying maybe one or two things standing. I think if every time, if I could get him to do a few things comfortably on the table, Hey, then let's try to stand up and see if you can tolerate. So I've had him try rolling a physio ball forward on the table, um, or even just standing, um, holding on to handle for support, just some like gentle calf raises, just something I've, I've tried to get him just look, you can stand and it's okay. Um, but his tolerance really varies from day to day. So some days he's open to trying standing and some days it's just not going to happen. We've tried the bike on and off and it's just some days he's you no, know, not going to work. So one of the things too, uh, Daria, that I would think about with him is whenever, so when standing is super uncomfortable, if you can get them to widen their base of support, um, that can make a huge difference and see if his, how his symptoms feel standing when it, you know, especially even on a day where he's not as comfortable. Okay. It's bothering you standing here. Let's stand where it doesn't hurt. Let's find a way to stand and have him bring his feet apart and do some different things um, to get that going. And he can even drop his head down a little bit into some flexion to see if that helps. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when he's standing, because oftentimes, you know, the, the head goes into more extension to try to keep our eyes on the horizon. But if he's just standing there, if he can just simply just, you know, drop his chin a bit, that sometimes can relieve that, that tension just enough for him out of compression to, to maybe, or, you know, just change his base of support. Um, is he opposed to using a, a telescoping pole or a walking stick? I'm not talking about a cane at all. I'm talking oh, about one of the, you know. I haven't thought of that. Um, we have them too. Um, yeah, I, I would yeah, I'd, great I'd idea. put a couple in his hands or put one in his hand and see what he does with it and see how it helps. Um, because some of it may just be fear of falling, you know, and fear that it may be part of, you know, this guarded thing. He's probably had it for a while. I don't think that it came on just with this episode. Right. Yeah. Usually that's a learned response. And that's like what Rebecca, uh, Erica was talking about with, um, you know, the uh, paresthesias of the feet. You know, people tend to walk a little bit funny and, um, you know, they, they actually push right through too. So he can walk with a little bit wider base of support. And that can be quite helpful as well. Um, he can also see if he can like put his back up against the wall and just let the wall hold him up you know, so he could drop into a little bit, you know, he can just kind of let his back round into the wall and he can drop his head some and see if that helps his symptoms also. So he needs to find ways throughout the day to alleviate these symptoms. Yeah. And he can't always do it by sitting down because yeah. that's not going to help him stay functional, but he might can walk a little bit further. Like um, Erica said, with a weight in his hand or with the hiking stick, you know, try both and see what happens. If he needs to use a weight in his hand and that does feel better, then he can grab his wife's purse and carry it, you know, so, or something, you know, to, to make it, you know, a grocery bag, but look here, put your things in here in this bag and then just carry it when you go. And then that'll be enough to kind of remind you to, you know, kind of change positions or postures. Um, the uh, hands and knees thing, if he won't get on his hands and knees, you know, you can also use the uh, treatment table and have him put his forearms on the table 
and bend his knees. And he's in a basic kind of position there so that, um, you know, he can start to do some weight shift and change and like uh, some cat cow, you know, kinds of movements to start to get that, you know, spine stuff going. I'm, I'm hearing all my yoga friends that are listening on this podcast talking in my ear right now. Yes, at the breathing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Get him yeah. some long exhales. The final thing that I can think of, too, that will be, I think, extremely helpful, and you can work this into a progression, but when you can find a position for him to stand in that feels a little bit better, if he's holding the hiking stick, he can put both hands on it in front of him, and he can just twist side to side with the stick if he's not comfortable doing it without the stick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that gives him a little bit of stability there. As he gets a little bit better, I'd have him put his hands across his chest, and then I'd have him put his hands up by his ears, and then maybe even reach his hands up in the air, or maybe just one arm up in the air. So that, but making sure that that rotation is kind of getting in there. And it doesn't have to be much. It, sometimes you can just have him stand with a wider base and use his head and turn side to side. Yeah, he needs to decrease his fear of movement at this point, yeah. you know, and he's mm -hmm. just, um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these sort of typical protocols, you know, flexion, 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 the guy needs to stand, he needs to yeah. stand and he needs to move. So, you know, that, you know, that's okay for a relief position. But at the end of the day, he's, he's carrying his wife's stuff, he's moving, he's lifting, he's extending, he's taking her out of the car. So, you know, I love the, the, you know, just little bits of movement, even when he's walking, I always tell my patients, because they're like, he's probably walking so rigid, he's guarding all his muscles are like on fire. I always tell them like, you know, we need a little salsa <laughs> in your mm -hmm. movement. And, and, and I always just have them, you know, in addition to the movement, I'm like, just swing your arms, you know, and a lot of times in New York, people are carrying things and they're like, I can't swing my arms, I'm carrying, but at least maybe at home or, or just try moving the arms and that will induce the rotation that Susan was talking mm -hmm. about. You know, if he's afraid to actually do the actual rotation, he can just move his arms and do an mm -hmm. arm swing. Um, does, another he have, does, does he have a favorite kind of music, speaking of salsa? Yeah. I can ask. Yeah. Put it yeah, on. make it fun. <laughs> yeah, put, when he comes into the clinic, get your phone out, find out what kind of genre of music he likes, and turn it on. Because that sometimes him. can induce oh, that. Yeah. And, and it also changes their motor patterns. You yep. know, they just start kind of bouncing a little bit and doing some things. And those little things could be extremely healthy for all of his pieces and parts. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no I'm just, no, 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 no. That's fine. Uh, that's, well, we're in our living room, so this is good. Um, <laughs> so. I, I, at CSM, I went to this really great session on motor control and motor learning with Chris Powers, Linda Van Dillen, and Irene Davis, mm -hmm. and they talked about motor learning, how it's skill acquisition, and, mm -hmm. and it's um, and cueing, and it's and it's it, it, motor control and motor learning are two different things. They talked about cueing, external versus intrinsic cueing, and how e the intrinsic cueing, you know, tighten your glutes, tighten your hamstrings doesn't cut it so much anymore. And it's more about external cueing, uh, you know, soften the floor or, or imagine, you know, y y y you're, you're dancing or things like that using imagery. Mm -hmm. So with somebody like this, who's really fear-based and guarded, you know, imagine you're dancing, you think about external cueing of things. He likes the music's great. He could start to, to, to dance. Um, and st what I would do in standing, if it's safe, uh, you could have him catch a ball, have him bounce a ball. You could throw him a ball in standing if he doesn't need, like, I don't know if he's safe standing and balanced like that, but if you have someone you could just watch for, you know, have him watch, and then you could play the music and see how he moves. You can just bounce the ball and see how he moves if he's really that guarded, but just distract him, distract him, you yeah. know? Do you, have a, do you have a corner in your clinic? An empty corner? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put him in the corner. Mm-hmm. So, um, so when you throw the ball, he's got, you know, if anything yeah. happens, he's just going to be right there into the corner. That's yeah. a, that's a, that's a real big um, balance trick is, as they're working, they can start to work into the, they can work in the corner because they feel safer and he can find a corner at home to work too. So, but that yeah. way he can kind of work on, you know, either moving his arms more or turning his head side to side. You can still put the stick in front of him and let him hold the stick in front. Um, cause then it acts like a rudder, but the body can still twist around it. So, um, I like the, I like the, the telescoping sticks a lot for that reason, because it doesn't allow them to lean on it. It just helps them, you know, and he can put it in positions to where he could actually kind of maybe flex a tiny bit 
while he's walking to alleviate his symptoms to be able to do the walking that he wants to do. And um, that can be quite helpful. So you could also, Daria, with um, following up on that, with what Susan said is, if he is afraid and he does get a bit of symptoms, we've talked about on the podcast reset exercises. You could find him something, like sitting would obviously be a reset, yeah. but if he mm -hmm. can't sit, maybe he could empower himself to find a movement in standing that would ease his symptoms versus just sitting down in a chair uh and then that way and in he and he and it could immediately relieve his symptoms and he goes back up and you know you sort of need to increase that tissue tolerance line as they say and you know in his when he was younger did he what, what was his occupation did he participate in anything when he was younger any sports or any any interests I'm honestly blinking right now on occupation, but not any particular physical activity like a sport or something. Okay. No, I was just thinking that maybe is there something that because as you know, he's getting older and you know, he's the primary caregiver, it's very hard on 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 him. And I think that if you can, you know, think about his social situation and 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 maybe th some things that he's done when he was younger or 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 you know, just to get him to just decrease the fear yeah, and give him a little bit of hope, uh, think, for lack of a better word. I've been trying to encourage him for days where he's feeling better to walk just for the sake of walking, not walking because I have to do this chore or iron just, just to enjoy outside when it was warmer out, you know, or even in his building. And he's very like in his head and like, I have, but I have to do these things. He's always task oriented and has the running list of things that he has to do. Um, and I, like, I was trying to help him, like Susan had taught, the resting, breathing, just take a minute in the morning, a minute at night, whenever you have time, um, try it and stand. And it's just, it's, um, it's difficult to get him to just enjoy like a moment um, mm -hmm. and just try something. And if it hurts, then stop. If it feels okay, keep going. And yeah. with so I, think, I think the trick there to that is, is you got to figure out what he wants to enjoy. Um, we have all kinds of ideas of what we think might be enjoyable for people. For him, it may be that he needs to do some of this around planning his tasks, because if that's what brings him purpose and joy, whether or not we think it's appropriate doesn't matter. You know, he's not going to do things that he isn't going to do, so you have to kind of figure out what will he do. Like, if you didn't have this back pain right now, what would you be doing? And it, he'll probably tick off the same things, and it's like... But tell me about what about your life that you enjoy? What are you missing? What's missing out of your life right now that you would be doing if you weren't having this back pain? And then you can kind of take a step back and get him to engage and say, how can we make that task then like it was before your back pain? What can we add in? What is missing? And it may be he just needs to turn on the music. Maybe he'll be totally resistant to that. I don't know. You know, it doesn't work for everybody, but it's great if it does, but it has to be their genre. You can't just say, here, let's listen to music. <laughs> it's going to be the music he wants to listen to, you know, and, or, you know, maybe he wants, I don't know. You'll have to, you know, get in and ask him, you know, just ask a different question, okay. you know, and keep yeah. it open-ended and make him answer, you know, yeah. because your answers are not, you know, it's not going to be a magic wand that's going to help him. We have to figure out a way to get him moving a little bit easier and better. And some of that needs to come from the idea that, oh, if I do this, you know, it doesn't bother me. You know, so then that kind of starts to click the brain and make it start thinking of some other things like, well, if that didn't bother me, maybe if I move this way, it won't bother me. Right. So, yeah. So if you can do it around things that he want that he, you know, is, is either really wants to do or is missing or has yep. just not thought of as a possibility. So you can give him, you know, but I would, I would definitely get some music on when you're in the clinic with him. Yeah. I just think it strums people's central nervous system to hear music, you know, and yeah. it does change their readiness to move for sure. Yep. I just have music on, but I haven't put on something like to ask specifically what type of music. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. you should. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was thinking also Daria in, in standing sometimes this may not, I'm not sure if this would make them better. You could try. Um, I have a, like sometimes put a half foam roller under people's heels that may put him into more extension and make him worse, but I would try it. Okay. Um, it may alter his uh, nervous because when you're sort of up on your, you know, when you're sort of your heels are elevated, you're in a little bit more of extension. But I would try that to see if that alters his symptoms for better or worse. At least you'll have something. Um, and then if he's so afraid to do things in standing, you know, with the plinth or with walking up the wall or the ball or the, the tell us the sticks, you can have him in sitting 
in a nice chair and, and throw a ball to him or just get him to move in sitting, have him put his hands above his head, just, just to mm-hmm. start with. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 you know, make it, I mean, he's sitting, he should feel comfortable. Ball toss, arms above the head, movement, distract him, put the music mm-hmm. on, you know, juggle, juggle, <laughs> you could, you know, you could make it up, but that may be just an, uh, an interim, you know, before the standing, if he's just really that, that afraid to, to move. Yeah. Sitting's been 50, 50, if he can tolerate it. Um, we have, moderately cushioned chairs so not something he would find horribly uncomfortable but not something you're going to sink into and sometimes he can tolerate like I'll try like just anything where he I know he's flexing he's comfortable so just trying to move maybe roll flexible on a diagonal mm-hmm. sometimes sometimes it's not not gonna happen yeah but maybe if he's just sitting in a chair not okay. but but just if you have a ball catch mm-hmm. or I, I'm just trying to change the context um, because sometimes that, that alters pain levels, just change the context of movement. And, and like we always talk about Susan variants, just vary yeah. it up and strum that nervous system. And, uh, you know, the, especially at his age, it, it is a really common, a common complaint and a common diagnosis. And, uh, uh, I do think as therapists, sometimes we resort to a lot of the, the, the standard with, with these patients. And I think that getting them to move in different ways, uh, you know, is, is really the best, the best solution. Mm-hmm. And it can be, uh, and you have to go into standing. You have, you have to do it period end of report. It's, it's the way it is. And, um, you know, my I've, one question I forgot to ask at the beginning, did he have any other interventions like any epidurals or anything like that? I was going to bring this up. So we we took a, there was an interesting turn that has happened with this. Um, so he's had, he and his wife go to the doctor often for all kinds of things. Um, so every time he would follow up regarding this, he'd come back with another prescription with another, I guess with, a, you know, Oh, now it's knee pain. And out. just, they kept adding things, which has affected him. I think he just sees a growing list of diagnoses. Um, so he, his doctor had been suggesting a few different, um, interventions and they had, he was very nervous to try an epidural. It's very, very nervous. Um, and he ultimately had one on January 2nd. And the, I saw him, I think that like a few days later on the 7th. And um, he said the first night he felt relief and he was encouraged. And then everything was right back to the way it was. And then when I saw him yesterday or Monday, this week, um, I asked, how is, you know, how are you doing? And he was very visibly stressed. And you could hear it in his voice regarding his wife. And then it was like, so how is sleeping going? It's like, oh, I'm sleeping better. He can now sleep for, since the epidural, th- up to three hours at a time without a waking, where before it was like every hour. And it was interesting, like, how is the pain level? Oh, it's going down. Has the frequency? Not as bad. But that initial, how are you doing, was completely opposite. <laughs> yeah, so that's, a, that's an interesting thing that you bring up, because we have to quit asking that question. Because socially, how, how are you doing? You're, you're just going to get the blanket response. And nobody in our culture is good at celebrating the victories. Yes. <laughs> so even though things are better, we're conditioned to think, but we're not at our goal yet. And so what we forget is we need to celebrate those victories all along. So I loved how you started asking some more pointed questions. And you have to spend a little time with them and say, you know, yay. I mean, just almost being silly, like, this is fantastic. Remember two months ago? Because they don't remember two months ago, this was a huge problem for you. And although it's not where you want it to be, it is the trajectory is in the right direction. You're able to do this now. You're able to do that now. This is starting to change a little bit. I know you're so worried about your wife. I hear it in your voice, you know, um, but the fact that you're starting to get better is very hopeful, you know, and, you know, so you're acknowledging, yes, you have worries. Yes, I, I hear it. You know, I'm sure he's scared to death of losing her. I mean, you know, or something, you know, along that order, um, you know, and acknowledging that, but also getting him to acknowledge the things that are better, you know, and so that was great. I, I don't usually ask people how they're doing. I, I just kind of say, tell me what we're going to celebrate today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, where, where, you know, what's, what's, you know, what's the celebration today? And, you know, where are you struggling? You know, so, you know, yeah, and then I, I can get right into it because most people will do the opposite of him. They'll come in and they'll say, you'll say, how are you doing? And they'll say, Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. 
and you'll think, okay, everything's all right. And it's like, no, it's not all right, but they're just conditioned to say, I'm yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, and they're also conditioned to say, let's say you haven't seen them in eight days, and seven out of the eight days, they're fantastic, and the eighth day, they suck for lack of a better word yeah you're there's having a bad day that day that sucked okay and it's like hello you know seven out of eight days so it, that is t that we need to steer patients away from that and be yeah. his whole ramped up system it's uh you know he's not gonna celebrate we, we are we are bad susan at celebrating yeah, anything in life we mm -hmm. don't celebrate we have to celebrate more mm -hmm. i think and uh and that will certainly be uh make him smile you know does he smile does he laugh in the clinic I think that'll really help that cortisol level drop in his system if, you know, just something that, you know, you know, I think you need to start, just, I always tell personal stories, you know, I, I've taken uh, care of both of my parents uh, who were, were quite ill and it really does affect your nervous mm -hmm. system and I think you need social support for that and if he's not getting that from anybody, he needs to get it from you or you need to mm -hmm. gently suggest something about the family because he, he just, he's not going to have... Well, it could also be the church, there's a clergy sure. person, you know, I don't know what religion he is, you know, is it a rabbi, a priest, a, you know, a, you know, a good friend, you know, a, you know, what, whatever it could be. Um, you know, finding, maybe helping him find a good counselor to, to help him sort through all of this stuff that's going on. Um, you know, just something else so that he has somewhere to go with, you know, some of those issues that he's facing or dealing with right now. Yeah. And that can be quite helpful too, for yeah. sure. Um, Daria, have you tried doing any of the, uh, like the NOI apps, the Recognize Slow Back app or anything mm -hmm. like that. What about mirror therapy, doing any kind of mirror work? Um, you know, it's maybe hard with the low back because it's, it's really, I'm just thinking of some, just trying to think in my brain, uh, putting them in front of a mirror and seeing if that helps in, in, in movement from a movement. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Susan, but that may help or try Recognize, sure. you know. You know, the only, the only thing about Recognize app is they have to be willing to like, put apps on their phone and yes you know yes. and and some people are like all in you know yeah. i've had people in their 70s 80s 90s all in and i've had others in their 60s yeah. going i don't really know how to do it i don't want I know. to and it's like okay that's a stress for them forget it that's not good yeah yeah, uh, yeah. It, has to, it, can't, it has to be not stressful <laughs> yeah he has enough stresses but a yeah. mirror is a good thing you know and, you know, he could even do simple things like every time you pick up a magazine, you're going to, oh, here's the thing, if you're going to the doctor all the time, you know, all those magazines they have on the, the table, pick up magazines and start looking for everybody's left hip. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And just like every picture you look at, where's their left hip? Where's their left mm -hmm. hip? Where's their left, you know, and, there are, and then the next one is where's their right foot? So getting him to at least visually through his brain cross midline can be helpful. Yep. And those kinds of, or where's the left ear? I even had one lady who, who I was treating who said, um, actually, she said, I started, when I was watching the news, I started paying attention to everybody's part in their hair. Is it on the left side or the right side? <laughs> and the picture, you know, was, you know, backwards, you know, because the, the picture's different that, you know, how it comes to our brain, it gets flipped. You know, it's kind of like why mirrors are so funny because it does, you know, turn your image around and upside down a little bit or something like forget exactly what it is, but it's different as it comes in, which is why people have trouble doing their hair in front of the mirror because they're like, wait, 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 which way do I grab mm -hmm. and pull? Um, so those kinds of things can be helpful too, but he can grab, I mean, those magazines are there. You know, you just have to kind of sit down with him and explain to him about how the brain starts to pay attention to only one thing. And by doing this makes the brain start to kind of look around at some different things that are going on with body. And even though it's not a movement that he's doing, it changes the readiness to move, which can change his pain experience. So you have to just kind of play with, play with the words and the stuff and, you know, kind of see if he's at remotely interested, you know, uh, about doing that. Or he can just look at people. You know, if he doesn't want to pick up magazines, you know, just, I don't know, just, you know, oftentimes I, I'll have people, when you're walking down the street, I want you to pay attention to one thing, like, where's everybody's left knee, you know, or where's everybody's right hand? And just, you know, and then that, that crossing midline kind of thing and the eyes working back and forth looking for that, you mm -hmm. know, changes the prefrontal cortex. We know that. Yep. 
you know, sensory wise, the stuff coming in, but actually prefrontal motor, you know, coming out so that that readiness to, to change or that readiness to move can be a little bit different because uh, the brain's having to pay attention to something different other than exactly. what the sensory, pe the nociceptive pieces that are coming upstairs. Yep. You know, so great ideas i think mm -hmm. with, the, with the walking and the distracting just have them look at you know have yeah. them follow other people or just their eyes it's a great idea that may actually give him more longevity when he yeah. I mean, in terms of his, his uh how many steps he can take before he yeah uh, and sometimes yeah. even going a different direction yes just change do the you, pattern up come, do you come out of your apartment and turn right every time <laughs> yeah, would, i do to the subway <laughs> uh, what would happen if you turned left yeah or could you cross the street first and then go and then cross back i don't know you know just that would be crazy just, he is so has his this is you know he's very task oriented schedule so to change something up because i'm sure everything he does is you know the same every day right yeah. yeah or to change up what he's doing within that task orientation that's so important yeah. for him can yeah, be just, helpful as well you yeah just change one thing you got a ton of ideas so mm -hmm. you know if you just change one thing it may just be that catalyst to to some long-term change and and you know just reinforce the the fact that he will get better and um it's very common and, and empower him with some you know, hope i think that it, it's it, it's if you look at like different circles like cognitive social emotional physical his is his circle his physical i believe personally his physical circle is small and his emotional and cognitive is much larger in terms of the whole presentation mm -hmm. so that's where i would start yeah so as you kind of go through this and you think about your extrinsic cues that you want to do you know soliciting what kind of music he wants to hear i don't really ask them if it's okay to put on music i just ask them what kind of music do they like and i just put it on and i'll lower it you know it doesn't have to be loud or anything um you know when i'm getting ready to like introduce like the telescoping stick sometimes i'll just hand it to them and i'll say see what you think yeah just see what you think mm -hmm. you know um you know and then they're kind of intrigued you know because it's like oh i have to be creative i have to it's like just move with it see what happens and you know they they everybody always feels very awkward with it in the beginning but i just encourage them to move with it and some some people really like it other people are kind of mm, that's okay other people are just like this isn't for me and that's fine yeah you know but we're going to just explore different things so sometimes you can do that and that's a lot more fun for you too because then you can kind of get in the creative explorative mood like well what about this see about this you know Yep. Let's, let's, you know, let's do this here, stand there, catch this, you know, just some different things. You can yeah. Do. Like change, like change it up a lot. I had a patient, I, I doubt his wife can, can stand up that, that long, but uh, for listeners, I had a patient uh, who had a similar presentation and his wife could stand and move and they actually love ballroom dancing. So they, I had them dance a little bit in their house. <laughs> it felt better. It's, it's just about finding something mm -hmm. that can take him literally out of his his head so to speak just out of that that thinking non-stop about the stress and about this his leg pain and and things like that and his fear and you've got a lot of creative ideas so uh it'll be interesting to see um how he does how often do you do you generally see him usually twice a week not consistent because sometimes it depends on other things in his life um, right yeah yeah so do you and okay so do you have you is the facility you work in is it does it large uh does it have equipment in it do you have a space where you could do all these things yeah. oh yeah yeah uh, yeah. yeah okay yeah okay. Please, we have space and even i was thinking with like playing to try tossing a ball um we have an aide so i can i can stand behind him if he's ah uh, yeah 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 that's great do you have any other questions or anything else susan or daria that you want to no, you got no. a lot. You got a lot. Thanks, thanks for, yeah, this was a lot. And uh, I know we kind of bounced around on a lot of different ideas, but that's what it's about, right? Yeah. It's just sharing some ideas. Some may work with him. Some may work with others. Some may work with some of your clients. Some may work with some of my clients and Erica's clients and all of the listeners out there. Um, you know, the idea, you know, that I think some of the main points is extrinsic cues for this guy um get rotation wherever you can even if it's just in the eyes or the head um because it's important to start to restore that get them moving in more automatic patterns like catching a ball maybe you know uh putting a stick in their hand to walk just doing some different things and finding some positions of comfort 
that mm -hmm. Erica talked about, the reset position. Um, with him, it may even be, you know, like she said, he can't always grab a chair because it's not always possible, you know, to feel better. But, you know, he could lead on a countertop, you know, and be encouraging to go ahead if you're really, if it's really bothering you, find a wall to lean against, lean on a countertop, some of those things to be able to have a little more control over when your symptoms are higher or lower. And, um, gee, some support for the guy. He's going, going through a lot. Yeah. He's lucky to have you. Yes. I'm trying to even encourage, because we have um, a lot of older patients, and they're involved in the community. They go to the meetings, mm -hmm. yoga, all that. So I've been trying to encourage any of the options, but it's, it's been hard to, to get him to, because he has to go to these appointments. He has to help his wife. His wife's not feeling well today kind of things. Um, mm -hmm. And I like incorporating things like, you were saying the magazines at the doctor's office. Mm. I, know, I, I think he'll be willing to try that. Yeah, so you have to, if you can't get them to, to change outside, maybe you can get them to find some variance within. Yep, yep. You know, something else that they can do, and it doesn't feel like it's, it, it may not feel as uncomfortable for him, you know, to add those pieces in. So. Yeah, if, he's, if he's stuck in his routine, maybe you can shade something in that routine while he's mm -hmm. doing it like the magazines. I did that once with my neck. I had severe neck issues at one point, and I started looking at people's necks in magazines, and I was like, man, that was a huge – that made me feel a lot better, you know, and I think you have to be consistent with that, but that's, uh, that's definitely, uh, it should help him because it's, yeah. change the walking and you can, you can, you can't change the fact that he needs to walk, but maybe you can change how he's walking. Exactly. You know, where that, where the stick comes in or some of the other stuff or base of support, you know, different things so that it, at least he has his schedule that he's really adhered to, but at least he knows that there's things he can do within that schedule that can maybe be helpful. Yeah. So. And also, oh, sorry, Great. Susan. No, it's okay. I, um, I just had one quick thing. When, when, is, his, is his wife in a wheelchair? Is he pushing or is he, she yeah, ambulatory? Yeah. She's ambulatory. For the most part, she is ambulatory. So does he, he has to help her varies though? Okay, so does he, does she hold on to him when they walk? So maybe you can have her go on the other side or switch sides when she's walking because he could be pulling. She could be pulling him into that pattern that's not optimal. I mean, I just thought of that off the top. So yeah, that's a good one. You can try that because you know she's not in a walker. Or if she's leaning on him, she's leaning on him. Trust me. Uh, and, and, and that's where the stick may come in handy yeah. because it might help him feel a little bit more stable, you know, while he's supporting her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have you back on and you have to give us an update. <laughs> it's been fun. And, and for me to, I'm always trying different things, honestly, taking things from your podcast too. And what, Oh, like, Oh, that sounds like him. Or let's see if this will work mm -hmm. right now. A little, um, as of a couple of days, I'm very encouraged with the change with seems like with epidural. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Sometimes we need to have those things to help settle things down. Yep. But that also means that celebrate those victories because things yep. can change and the movement piece is going to be really helpful to continuing that change. So yep. yeah, you always be wanna, good. Yeah. yeah you you want to intervene when they're feeling good. It's a great time to change movement and movement patterns. So this is awesome. Do you have anything else or you, uh, you've got a lot. So <laughs> I appreciate it. It's, wow. It's oh, I had a blast. I don't yes. know about you guys. I had fun with this. <laughs> Thanks for coming on and Thank sharing. You. Thank you. And to everybody else out there. Thanks for listening again. Episode number 40. Here we are. <laughs> and um, we'll see you back in a couple of weeks on our next episode of tough to treat. Thank Bye. you everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks Bye. for being on Daria. Thank you, Daria. Thank you.